Ladies and gentlemen, we are at the Star Wars premiere right now. That is the line behind us. It wraps all the way around the bed. It's getting heated. There's already like 50 people ahead of us. We got a comprehensive I'm review so coming nervous. out after this. Stay tuned for that. We'll leave an annotation to skip ahead to it right around here somewhere. I'm so scared, guys. We're gonna enjoy this. Boys and girls, we went and we saw it. So in this video, we're gonna be doing a comprehensive review on Rogue One, what we thought on it. It was a ride, guys. Untraditional Star Wars beginning, where all you saw was this title, no crawl text. And you're on this one planet, it's basically a, what, it reminded me of a barren wasteland, of like a dried up ocean. Jin Urso and her father, Galen Urso, he's an Imperial scientist, he's the one that ended up building the desk, and they're in hiding from the Empire. He used to work for them, and now they're in hiding. So Galen Urso was, yes, he engineer for the Death Star. He yeah. felt some remorse. He kind of saw where the Empire was headed, the evil behind it all, and yeah. tried, basically stepped away from it. Essentially, they started off being a defense organization for the galaxy, and then they realized they were turning into a corrupt power that was going to completely try to take over the galaxy and destroy yes. all of their planets and mine them for all their resources and just leave. So I think he started to realize what was actually taking place and felt guilty and then that is where this kind of movie catalyst is where it begins, it's where it builds, and you and you find out later that he actually put a little trap inside. So then we skip ahead about 15 years where Jin is imprisoned. So the rebels were the ones that stopped that big transport. So this is the second planet that we're on now. We following the cinematography on this barren wasteland. Jin is then taken to, with the Rebels, taken to the Alliance headquarters where she sees Saw Gerrera for the first time since she was 16 years old, where he had left her yep. with just a pistol on a desolate planet. It was very tense. There was a lot of tension at this scene. Uh, oh, yeah. She was very, very bitter and remorseful towards him, and uh, he basically then showed her a hologram of her father, how he um, sabotaged the Death Star in the making of it in order to give the Rebels a chance to destroy it and still save the galaxy. And it also exposed the weakness of the Death Star and how exactly the Rebels can take down the Death Star. There was not a lot of hope, there was a lot of destruction you see later on in the planet of Jeddah. All the Kaber crystals were being mined by the Empire and being sent up in shuttles right to the main, like, the old school destroyers from the original trilogy. Which the Kaber crystals were the ones that were basically and a power the lightsabers and everyone's kind of getting sketched out by this like why are they mining all these caber crystals what are they using it for so then we fast forward a little bit to the imperial trading outpost between it was very cool how they did it it was between two a city built between two asteroids and you see the gunslinger captain cassian and he starts off getting information from some sort of spy and basically the imperials find out and start coming after them and the guy turns to him, how are we going to escape? And, and Captain Cassian immediately shoots him, shot some stormtroopers, then later killed his spy, yep. and then left. Just in the most like kind of badass, <laughs> kind of scummy way. Kind so of this similar was, to our this, introduction to Han Solo. Yeah, so this was the very first introduction we see of Captain Cassian, and we don't know what to think of him. We don't know what his plan is, we don't know whose side he's on, he's just killing everybody. So... Very, at this point, very, very confusing. A lot of new information needed to be gathered to take what, what to, where to derive from this situation. So. One takeaway I want to talk about from this movie, not only did we get a brand new cast, we got brand new locations, we had brand new overall feel for Star Wars, and I think that's so important. I feel like Star Wars throughout the years have been following the same kind of sequence of events, the same kind of pattern, the same kind of playbook, per se. I think it's so important in this one that we got to see not only, like I said earlier, brand new cast, brand new people, brand new places, but a brand new storyline. Star Wars for some of us is about nostalgia. Some of us watch Star Wars for the adventure. Some of us watch it for the cinematography. Some of us watch it for the CGI effects. See, Star Wars means something so different to so many different people. So I think in this video, this last one, Rogue One, a Star Wars story, the first of the anthology films, I think it brings life to Star Wars again, in which way, in some ways that Force Awakens never did. Force Awakens was a great movie, J.J. Abrams did a terrific job, but he didn't revitalize Star Wars for me. He told the same story in a modern version. Gareth Edwards completely and utterly blew this movie out of the park, and I can't stress that enough. It was very one-sided for the most part of the movie. It didn't really follow that Star Wars kind of scripted 
kind of scripted like foundation like I mentioned earlier that we that we've seen so often from the Star Wars franchise. It was a lot more fluent, it had a lot more variety. Like we kind of talked about the different planets. I mean right away within the first 20-30 minutes you already are in like four different locations going from the rainy wasteland to Jeddah to the Imperial compound to the Imperial trading post and then back to the rebel um, headquarters on Yavin 4 and there's just a lot of variety a lot more very like very action-packed change of pace a lot's happening so like you really got to be focused and follow them follow it very intensely to know what's happening keep up and I really like that I, I like not having the predictability not knowing what's coming next and having a lot of variety to to the movie itself it really it really pulled it all together and tied it all together and made it very it did follow the Star Wars like kind of theme but oh in its own like it had its own little take on it its own little spin-off which I really like hey, you know, let's talk about snowtog for a second and talk about the evolution not only in special effects from practical effects to all CGI to now we're finally at that day and age where we can perfectly seamlessly combine special effects and real life um, model explosions and things like that and the sure. blending process of all that and not only just how that is completely influenced because Star Wars was the first ever movie in 1977 to have special effects at all there was no such thing people just used practical sets or painted sets or there was no there was, no, there was no claim. There was nothing like that. It completely revolutionized that. And what people tend to forget, people hate the prequels. In 1999, when Star Wars came out, there was no such thing as CGI. They created CGI for those movies. Yeah. And now they're finally one of the first real innovators to combine practical effects with CGI effects and do it really seamlessly. Force Awakens did a good job, but I didn't think it was as impactful. Like, it still felt, I don't know... A little so, bit too perfect for me. So going on what you just talked to me about, you were talking about how they had um, basically like the wa the wide set that they had. You know, in in prior movies we would have kind of this like closed mind, like what you see here, like a very a very narrow subset. And you don't really see what's going on, like the whole big picture of it. But in this movie, they really have that like wide set. Like you really yeah. see everything that's going on. You see like the vat, and it really for me talks talking about the galaxy and yeah. infinite space it really kind of like it was it incorporated and correlated well with all that like showing like how like the vast expansion that they have with the all the sets that they have oh it was insane and not only just the sets but just like when you'd see plants or you'd see Jeddah and you start off you're staring at some dirt in their feet and it just slowly rises up and then you start seeing a formation and then you start seeing a city and then after you see that city you see a death destroyer on top of the city yep. where all the uh, kyber crystals are being sent to these imperial stations and it's so cool that you start off with just a little shot and just rises yeah, exactly. and so you get to see everything what like i felt like when i was there i was seeing what i would actually see if i was there i wasn't just seeing what the director wanted me to see i was seeing everything in its entirety and i think that is something so special that we don't mm -hmm. often see in movies and talking a little bit more about the cgi there was a little bit of cgi they had grandma talking who's obviously dead at this point inside the movie not just for one scene but for multiple scenes all throughout the movie and i couldn't like right away when i saw him introduced in the movie like right away in the beginning i i didn't think it didn't register for me like i didn't think anything of it but then i realized like midway through i'm like this guy's dead like how how is he in the movie yeah, it's insane it's... uh at the end princess leia like there was just there was a lot that they had darth oh, vader obviously let's talk about the ending right now yeah. the ending was epic the greatest ending in a movie i've seen probably my entire fucking life Jin finally gets death star plans on scarif at the imperial headquarters where they keep the archives of all the imperial stuff captain cassian kills director krennic <laughs> Jin, Jin sends the plans up in the archive to the rebel starship yep. and they finally got the message, they finally got the plans on how how Galen sabotaged the Death Star, how to destroy the Empire. Next thing, cut scene, black. You're on some sort of Star Destroyer. Darth Vader's ship takes over the rebel ship. We recognize this ship, we see this ship. This is the opening ship from A New Hope. We start to get that feeling inside of our penises and our stomachs where we're like, this is, is about to go down. Is it going to happen? And next thing you know, cut scene. We are in the dark. We see and hear the only give it, give it. Lord Vader. <laughs> and next thing you see, frantic rebel troopers. <laughs> and next thing you hear, <laughs> All you see is Darth Vader's red, vicious, freaking lightsaber lighting up the entire room. Next thing you know, he whips it, Slay starts doing force chokes. He's freaking out. He's killing people. 
Next it thing is you know, absolute chaos. It here. is absolute chaos. They try to they try to hide it. He's trying to they're trying to break out because mm-hmm. he locked the door. There's luckily a big enough gap. They do a little relay race. They're and running they, out. All this time, all this time, they have the plan on how to destroy the Death Star. They're trying to get it. The door's jammed. They're trying to get it through. Frantic. It's hectic. We don't know what's going on. We really kn- we know ultimately that they're going to get it out, but we don't see any sort of possible hope in this moment. We're just we're like ah! Darth Vader's force choking. He's slashing, killing people. He kills people. literally everyone. Luckily, the ship breaks away after they do a relay race. You next see the lights turn on inside the imp- the Rebel ship. You know this is the ship. This is where A New Hope, Star Wars, from 1977... The genesis of the 1977 film, New Hope. This is where it all, all began. Life is now complete. You see R2-D2. You see C-3PO. Next thing you see, though, a white figure hooded backwards. You can't see their face. Who could it be? Princess Leia. And her, I don't know if it was her daughter, I don't know if it's a doppelganger, some lookalike twin, but it was Princess Leia right there. And, and the all fresh. they say, they hand her the plan. She takes it. And they're like, I don't know what this is. It's hope. It's hope. So that's the end of the movie. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching up to this point. We really hope you enjoyed this. It was a ton of fun. As always, like, comment, subscribe if you haven't. We will post new vid- videos weekly, mm-hmm. if not daily. If we'll not do daily. reviews. We got a ton of movies coming up. We also have a major event working in the in the works right yep. now. None other than the surprise Christmas story. I don't even know what it's about. He has a secret plan. I got plan. a big plan. Stay tuned. It's going to be insane. If you guys did watch the movie, did did have something to say, if you thought, if you agree with something, disagree with something, let us know in the comments down below. We would love to have that conversation with you. But thank you for listening. And may the force be with you. Always. Peace. It was, it was very, um... Can I help you guys with anything? Oh, no, we're just making a movie.